joined by a man who doesn't even need an introduction, but Abe Kawa from First Round Management. You manage the best fighters in the world. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on, my man. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I, I represent the stars, the stars, the star fighters of the world, man. Best star fighters. I, I, I like to consider them stars more so than even fighters just because, you know, uh, I think everybody in the business represents fighters. I have a little bit of a, of a different knack for my guys. I think they're stars. I think all my people are stars. That's a great way to start off the podcast because I really enjoy speaking with you because you're a very business savvy kind of type of guy. But I remember the first time I had you on, uh, there's the second episode of when I started this podcast. And I could just tell you have a very um, unique relationship with your stars. It's not just they're not just clients for you. They're not just fighters. You could tell the relationship you have with them is something past than what you just do It's past business. And it clearly shows just the way you just answered that question right there. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm invested, man. You got to be invested in your clients. If you're not, it's not going to work out. They could tell they're going to leave you. It's just, you know, it is what it is. You just become a number and that's not cool. Right. So first of all, before I get started, how are you? How's the family? I know coronavirus, this whole thing has just been very crazy. So are you good and all your, your family's good? Thank God. Can't, can't complain. Thank God. I'm everybody's good, man. Thank awesome. You. Well, that's great to hear. Of course. Um, so last time we talked, we ended my episode with an MJ LeBron debate, of course. So I need to ask you before we dive into MMA, did you watch The Last Dance? I know you're an MJ guy. Of course, man. <laughs> that's, that's, that was like, you know, that was, that was sacred those Sunday nights, man. That was, that was an amazing, amazing series, man. I, I had so much fun watching it. I, I felt young again, just so like, you know, everybody knows I felt young again. Yeah. It was great. And it, yeah. and, it, and it also reminded me on why I feel so strongly about why MJ is the GOAT. They, it, for people who didn't get a chance to watch him play, mm -hmm. what they got was a chance to hear from his teammates as well as his mindset. And I think that's where the difference of, you know, the, the LeBron and the MJ comes. We don't, I don't think we see that, that mindset out of LeBron. Not to not, I listen, I think LeBron of, of this era is the GOAT, but I, it's just, right. it's, right. it's just different. It's just different. Yeah, no, it was incredible. It got a lot of people through this pandemic. It's like the one positive thing that we can all, agree upon to sit on the couch with our families and enjoy something that was amazing. Um, so on that note, my first question to you is kind of an awkward or a unique one. So Conor McGregor has his documentary, but let's yeah. just say ESPN said, Hey, we need to pick a UFC fighter to do a documentary on who would be your first recommendation. Man, I, I, I don't have a first, I have a bunch of guys that I would throw in that mix okay. and say they all work, you know, I, and I'd, I'd start with, with John Jones and I would say John's documentary, I think would be for, for the masses, just cause he's very private. No, not a lot of people get, get to know him and, and right. see what you know right. he is like, I think would be a great draw. The obvious, you know, Jorge Masvidal is there, but his story is very well written. I just think a lot of people don't get, uh, you know, the, 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 the stuff that he's kept private, you know, those are the things that would be impressive. Uh, the other guy I would say is Tyron Woodley. It, oh. People don't know Tyron Woodley, man, is his story will give you goosebumps. If you if people actually sat down, and listened to where he came from, how he grew up, his mom, his sisters, the neighborhood getting whooped like it was you. You start to listen to his thing and where he came and where he ended up and becoming the champion of the world, becoming one of the best champions of the world. It would be a huge story. Anthony Pettis. Another tremendous story that, you know, is there. Carlos Condit, uh, Derek Lewis has got a crazy story. Andre Arlovsky's got a crazy story. All my guys, I believe if I were to put together a series of, of guys, every single one of them, at some point, someone's saying, I need to watch that, that documentary. That sounds like, I would tune into that. Sounds like maybe something we, you, you need to do. That sounds amazing. Right? I um, saying, man. So from your FRM, FRM Productions coming soon. There you go. Look at that trailer dropping soon. Um, so from your professional perspective, obviously, as a manager of these stars, um, did you believe that the UFC was going to return? And when it did, did you think it was actually going to come to fruition, this whole UFC fight island, not even just different venues, an actual island dedicated to this? One thing I've learned when Dana says I'm going to do something, he does it. I, I don't. I, and, and he makes it a point to do it. So uh, he, he's done an amazing thing. He doesn't get enough credit. I think he gets, he gets uh, blasted by a lot of people. And, uh, you know, I don't think they understand what he went through and what he was up against to put these shows on. Uh, but I do know that when he said, Hey, I'm not going to fire anybody. I'm going to keep all my guys on staff and we're going to get you guys fights and what's going to happen. I think we all took that to the bank. I think every single person that knew him, that knew, you know, like, like what he's about, cash right. that check. That's right. a, that's a check. We all knew it was going to, it was eventually going to be able to cash. And, you know, he's, He's done it, man. He really wow. has. So now for you and what you do, 
how has that changed? Has your approach changed or how deals are discussed or just managing fighters, their families, um, health concerns? Has anything changed in that process? Everything has changed. Everything outside of the actual fight has changed. Uh, the way the way they, they book flights, the, the people that are allowed to come, the 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 quarantining, the testing, the, the making sure you have it before you got it. But all that stuff was learned. It was like on a fly. So, you know, right. uh, but we got it right. I, I think the UFC has it right, man. I think they, they set the standard and the standard is high. It's not it's not easy. The, what they're doing is not easy. So uh, it, it's impressive. And I think they got it right. I absolutely think they got it right. Right. So now, right. obviously, UFC 251 just happened. I had Dean Thomas on today, talked about Masvidal and his ability to adapt is so unique, not even just as an individual fighter in the octagon, but as a person to his opponents, the situations. What do you think is next for him or what does he want next? Is it that Usman rematch? Is it Conor McGregor? Is it Colby coming? What do you think is next? So, so I think he is absolutely 100% all for the belt. He said it himself. This is not my, these are not my words. These are his words. He wants that belt, uh, more than anything. And I think, uh, I think he, I think he can get it. And I actually think that this is a fight that can happen. So, uh, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Now, do you think down the line, I would just be remiss to not ask for fans. Cause I know people love the BMF belt. They love seeing Jorge and what Connor represents and them going back and forth. Do you think that's something down the line you could see coming to fruition? Of course, everything's possible, man. And I think if, if, uh, if it, if it presented itself, then, you know, there's obviously the chance that it can happen way higher than us just talking about it. But, you know, one thing that we do as, as a management company, as well as, you know, uh, our guys, it's different. If I had a guy that said, man, I only want to fight Connor, then that's right. my job. I've got to go get, go get that Connor fight. But, you know, when I got a guy that says, I don't want to bully people, and I'm not going to sit there and, you know, tell a guy, hey, you have to fight me. And why aren't you right. fighting me? Then my job is not to go out there and, you know, you know, advocate for that fight. I, there's no there's no sense. It, it, it'll almost feel like he bullied another guy into a fight. So I, I wouldn't want to do that. And, you know, if uh, if Connor's retired, I thank you. You know, I say thank you for for the for the years in the sport and doing what you did. And, you know, I hope he's enjoying retirement. He's absolutely done a, a fantastic job. And uh, thanks for, you know, for the for the good times. Right. That's a great way to look at it now. For John Jones, I want to transition to John Jones. Obviously, uh, in my opinion, the pound for pound greatest fighter of all time to step foot inside of the octagon. Um, what obviously he's in a situation right now with the UFC. But when I talk to you in my second episode, I'm like, I think John Jones is eventually. I could see him going to heavyweight. Um, he really wants that fight with Naganu, right? Like that's something that he really absolutely. wants to pursue. He absolutely wants that fight with Naganu. I think now uh, he's kind of switched gears a little bit in terms of just where he's at. He's kind of happy. Uh, uh, not, you know, uh, worrying about the UFC too much. He's, he's really involved in his, in his uh, uh, philanthropy work and, you know, he's giving back to the community. He's making him feel really, really good. And uh, for that, for that to be the case, you know, uh, fighting, fighting is only one part of him, but it's been a part of him for so long. That's the only thing he knows uh, uh, or, or, you know, people know him as uh, now that he's doing these different things in the community and really, you know, uh, bringing light to, to his own community. Starting, right. you know, with the man in the mirror, I think is is where he's at and makes him happiest. So if that's what's making my man happy, then, you know, I support him 100 percent. I saw some videos of him like out during the protests and he was making sure people didn't get hurt. And he was he had a group together. and I thought that was incredible. Um, now, yeah, I, I want to cares, ask you, cares cares a program. Right. I want to yeah. I want to see you. Uh, I want. Could you be the bridge for people that watch MMA, follow the news? There's so many different reports, so many different things out there or leaks and. What is going on with John in the UFC? Is that something we could see him returning this year, or it, like what's what's the real story? I think the ball is completely in the UFC's court. Okay, I just think it's completely in the UFC's court. I'm not I'm not uh, uh, gonna comment on on those things like that. I just you know obviously right. John has made his case publicly. He said where he's at, and that's that's really where where he's at. That he's not lying to anybody. Okay, he's, he's being very yeah. honest with with what he's saying. Okay. Um, now, on this note, the last couple things I have for you here is I would say John Jones the greatest right now, but Connor's retired. Uh, so we're in a weird situation where there's so many different exciting fighters and young stars. If I were to ask you, if someone asked you who's the face of MMA, who would you say the face of MMA is today? I think Jorge Masvidal. I think that's that's clear. really it's it's clearly it's clear cut. I don't think there's even uh, a question. I, I know most people will bring up another person. The only thing I would say is just look at the domestic buys. Uh, that that that'll sell. 
that will tell you where the state of the UFC is. I think it's, okay. I think it's Jorge Masvidal. And I, and listen, uh, this is not downplaying anybody else. You know, I, I will never right. dim another person's light. I'm just saying my guy's light is bright, is shining really bright right now. So right. I think he is the, the face of the UFC. And that's unique because after a loss, it seems like his stock is even higher because people understand he took it on six days and he was able to go the distance. I don't think people understand how tough that is to do. And it's like his stock give is him a camp. Give him a camp. That's all I'm asking <laughs> is give him a camp, man. Give him a camp. Give him a camp. Give my guy a camp. So you think it has a completely different outcome then if you give him a full camp? I, I even think Usman knows it has a completely different outcome if he has a complete camp. Really? I think we will have a harder time getting Usman to accept the fight, even though this is probably the most amount of money Usman's ever made. And if he, you know, wanted to make the same amount of money, if not more, this would be the fight. You know, we, we right. would give them give him the leverage to go out there and do that. Uh, it would make it would make financial sense for Usman. You know what I mean? Um, but that would be the riskiest fight of Usman's career. Wow. Now, let me ask you, as, as someone who's very close with him, his whole thing is the resurrection, right? How, yeah. like, he's, a, he's a veteran. How did all of a sudden he hit this stride later in his career where he just t- hit another gear? Like, What clicked? What happened where he was able to emerge and have the most successful year in UFC history? Well, he's spoken on that. He, he, out of his own words, you know, he, he's reassessed his fighting career and he realized, like, man, I should be able to end these people. I, I, I shouldn't have to rely on on judges and like, you know, they, they shouldn't be there. He doesn't right. want to have a judge at any of his fights. He wants to make all of his fights. It's kill or be killed. And I think, you know, he's figured that out and he's figured out, I'm not going in there to, to play games with any human. It's not right. going to happen. It's just, it's over. I, I, I know where my skills are. I know that I can formulate a good game plan. I've got to execute it. And if it's executed properly, no one can be with me in that cage. I, that's pretty much his, his, his mindset. Wow. My last two things for you here, Abe Kawa, again, thank you for your time, would be you're a fan of multiple sports, clearly. We just talked about the MJ documentary. I know you've watched the NFL. If there was an athlete that you think would be able to transition into the MMA world, is there one that sticks out to you? Man, an athlete that can transition into the MMA world. I, you know, I would say any athlete can do it. The, 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 you know, to be honest with you, just look at the guys that have – got into fights and those are the kind of the guys that I think get into <laughs> MMA because those are the guys that you know aren't afraid to take a punch or give a punch so right. you know it's it's those kind of guys some athletes don't want to get hit like you'll you'll see a lot of receivers go down the middle and they'll get alligator yeah. arms those are the kind of guys that probably not gonna last in uh MMA right. then there's some some linemen that they're so good off the ball and you know they get their hands up but you know you kick them in the leg and they're like dude I'm never doing this again in right. my life Right. So, you know, it just I just say, look at the guys that got into fights, you know, Ron Artest or Metal World Peace. You know, I oh. thought would have done really good in MMA because he's a dog, you know, uh, uh, a Ben, a Ben, uh, a Ben Wallace is his last name. Ben Wallace. The, would be the, next. Yeah. You know, I thought he would he would be also another uh, the Udonis Haslam, I think, from the heat Ooh. would be a dog in this thing. Yeah. So he would be a good one to uh, to transition to as well. Man. So on that note, you mentioned a bunch of NBA players. I have to ask. That's how we started it. That's how we're going to end it. Who do you have winning the championship this year? That's tough, man. I, I don't uh, I don't know. I be honest with you, I think it's a coin flip. Uh, th- there's been a lot of movement. Um, shit, that's tough. Clippers, I, I maybe Clippers. Oh, you know what I mean? Clippers. Like, I, 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 and I'm just saying, like, eh, it's tough, dude. It's tough. The, 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 the sport yeah. has gotten harder. It's gotten better. The guys have, you know, there's a case for almost. You know every top four team in, in each division to be right. there. There really is. I, I think there is, and I know a lot of guys went are probably going Lakers with LeBron. I don't think they're there yet, but they're close, and they're really close. That's going to be a tough team in the in the West to uh, to beat. But you know, I'll, I'll take the Clippers. I think it's a good. Uh, it's gonna, I think that's going to be the best team in the NBA. So, yeah. so I'll go with the Clippers. No, that that's a great pick. I think most would agree with you. So Abe Kawa, it's a pleasure. Thank you again for coming on episode two to now what episode ninety nine. So thank you. I like that. Oh man, I like that, dude. I like that. I like that a lot. So I was the second one, and I'm the second to to the last one before a hundred. I want to get Jorge for a hundred. That that would be that would be the icing on the cake right there to to the man himself, Jorge Masvidal. How you doing, sir? <laughs> <laughs> We'll let you go, Max. Sounds great. Peace.